Lucy, a young student, attends school in New Zealand, but her home is on a South Sea island with stunning blue lagoons. Let's listen to Lucy and enjoy this beautiful story with her. Today, I began using this large notebook for my diary. I brought it from home where I used it for English class. It still has many empty pages, which is great for my diary. At home, I read a sad but good story called The Diary of Anne Frank. Anne wrote about her problems, and it helped her feel better. Maybe my diary will help me too. Tomorrow marks two months since I left home. It feels like it has been the longest time ever. I miss home all the time, recalling every little detail except how warm it was. Here, it's always cold. But when I close my eyes, I see my family, friends, and favorite places. I grew up with my grandparents because my real parents live on another island. Our village, Vipaka, faced a big storm named Sharon once. It damaged some houses, but luckily, ours remained safe. The school was good back home, and I usually did well on tests. But doing so well probably made me leave. My teacher thought I should attend school in New Zealand, so my family sent me here to live with Auntie Vane. Aunt Vane has been living in Auckland for quite some time. There are four of us living in her house. Aunt Vane, her son Ta, my cousin Marlene, and me. I started attending the girls' college soon after arriving here. I have to stop writing now because Marlene wants to go to bed. At first, Auntie was nice. She asked me about home and all the family she hadn't seen for a while. She told me stories about when she was a girl on the island. Then she asked how much money I brought from the island. I said I didn't bring any, and she got a little mad. I explained that Mama and Papa didn't have money to give me. They said Auntie had a good job and earned plenty of money. Auntie said she worked at a chicken factory but didn't get much money, and most went to pay rent. Then I asked about my uncle. I was hesitant at first, fearing something bad would happen. Auntie started crying and told me about the accident. Uncle Ben worked at a company that made bridges. One day a heavy piece of metal fell on him. His back broke and he died in the hospital. I felt sorry I didn't know about it, and Auntie said she only told his family because he was from Niue, not our islands. I felt really sad for Auntie then, and bad that I came to live with her when she didn't have enough money. I haven't been able to write in my diary lately due to my busy school schedule. Although it's tough here, my teachers are nice, particularly Mrs. Price, my class teacher. She introduced me to a group of girls from Samoa who speak a language that's unfamiliar to me. The school is huge, with over a thousand girls and so many rooms, which can be scary at times. Everyone seems smarter than me and their English is excellent, despite my best efforts. I get lower marks than I did at home and feel like I don't have enough time for my work. Auntie works evenings at the chicken factory, which means I have to make dinner every night. Unfortunately, I can only study in my bedroom, but the noise from the video is terrible. Every night, Ta plays noisy videos full of shooting and shouting, which I hate especially the Sylvester Stallone movies. I think it's bad for Ta and Marlene. Yesterday, I asked Ta to lower the volume because I was trying to study, but he got angry and yelled at me. He thinks he's special, but he's just a silly boy who can't find a job. He won't turn down the video. 
I'm going to bed now. I didn't go to school today because it's too far away and I couldn't afford the bus fare. My aunt didn't have any money left, and she was getting angry at me. However, I plan on walking to school tomorrow instead. I tried to study at home today, but I didn't do very well. I'm really tired tonight. I woke up at 6 o'clock this morning and made some sandwiches for lunch. I left home before anyone else was up. It was still dark and scary outside because there was nobody in the streets. I walked down Dominion Road, and as the sky got lighter, I started feeling better. My school bag was heavy, and I tried to remember the bus route from when I had a ticket. Finally, I arrived at school, but I was late. The teacher at the gate took my name, and I got a detention, which was my first one ever. My class teacher, Mrs. Price, asked me why I was late to school today. I didn't want to tell her that I couldn't afford to take the bus, so I lied and said that I overslept. Mrs. Price seemed concerned about me and later during lunchtime, she brought a girl named Moana to see me. Moana is also from my country, although she doesn't come from my island. We spoke in our language and it made me feel happy to talk to someone from my home country. But at the same time, it also made me feel sad because it reminded me of home and everyone I knew. When I told Moana about walking to school, she took me to the school library and showed me a map. Together. We found a shorter way for me to get to school that doesn't follow the bus route. Moana even invited me to come to her place someday, but unfortunately, it's too far from where I live. I used the shorter route that Moana showed me to walk home. But I got home late due to my detention and reached at 6 o'clock. I'm very tired tonight, and I can't write anymore. This morning, my aunt gave me two dollars and I had to decide whether to use it for the bus or lunch. We only had fried bananas for breakfast because my aunt didn't get paid until tomorrow. So, I decided to walk to school and buy my lunch on the way. While walking, I came across a bridge over the motorway, exclusively for people. I stopped and looked down at all the cars moving like a big river going into the city. Suddenly, it started raining heavily, like it usually does back in my hometown, but it was very cold outside. Unfortunately, I didn't have a coat, so I got all wet from head to toe, including my hair, neck, legs, and shoes. Despite getting wetter and colder, I continued walking to school. However, I then saw a clock that indicated it was almost 9 o'clock, which was too late to reach school on time. As a result, I turned around and went back home. I was so cold that I had to get into bed to warm up. I didn't get up until Marlene came home from school. Auntie has started working at the factory during the day. She instructed Marlene and me to stay at home and do the grocery shopping. We walked to the supermarket, bought everything on the list, and still had some money left. We were famished, so I decided to treat us to some Kentucky Fried Chicken for lunch. The meal was scrumptious. We took the food to a nearby park and ate there. Passersby stopped and stared at us probably wondering why we weren't in school. I feared they might report us to the authorities, so I suggested we return home. I felt guilty for spending Auntie's money on fast food. And I warned Marlene not to mention it to anyone. I promised myself not to repeat the mistake. I didn't feel well in the afternoon, so I went to bed. My head was hurting and I thought I was catching a cold.
For the past few days, I've been bedridden with a terrible cold, which caused me to miss a lot of school. I'm worried about catching up because exams are coming up next month. I've always done well in exams back home. But it's different here. While in bed, I often look at my photos and the trochus shell that Papa gave me. When I put the shell to my ear, I can hear the lagoon whispering to me. Trochus shells are highly valuable to us. Every year, people from the villages can get trochus from the lagoon, but only a few for each family. So there will always be more for next year. The shells are usually polished for tourists. However, Papa polished this trochus, especially for me. And it's so beautiful with all the different colors. It's like holding a rainbow in my hand. Despite the darkness in my room, the trochus still shines. Today was a difficult day for me. When I woke up, I realized that I needed to go to school to catch up on my work so I could perform well in my exams and make my parents proud. I asked my aunt if she could lend me some money for lunch as I was planning to walk to school. However, she got really upset and started shouting at me, saying that she didn't have any money left even for her own children. She asked me why I had to come to her place anyway. I tried to explain to her that I didn't want to come and that I was sorry for causing any trouble. I told her that I didn't like being there and wanted to go back home. But my aunt got even angrier and said she didn't even have enough money for the bus. Let alone a plane ticket. She said that she didn't ask me to come there and that she only agreed because she couldn't say no to her family. She suggested that if I wanted to return home, my family should send money to pay for it. But I told her that they couldn't send any more money as they had already spent everything to send me there. Feeling very sad, I ran out of the room, crying. Everything in this place revolves around money. We need money for food, buses, warm clothes, and shoes. Back in our hometown, we only need money for the motorbike and some food from the shop. We get everything we need from the lagoon and fields. And we don't worry about money. But here, the idea of money makes me scared because there isn't enough. And I feel bad that Auntie has to get more because of me. I don't know what to do. There are no telephones here or at home. All I can do is lie on my bed, stare at my photos, and hold my trochus shell. Unfortunately, there's no school again today. It rained today, so I decided to skip school. Instead, I spent my time cleaning the house and watching TV. While I was at home, someone knocked on the door, but I didn't answer it. Later, I went to the mailbox to get the mail and found a letter addressed to my aunt. I opened it and read that she should visit immediately because I hadn't been going to school. I threw the letter away because I don't want my aunt to get angry with me again. But I am worried. I understand that it's illegal to miss school, but I am too far behind to catch up. I am thinking of quitting school and finding a job in an office to help my aunt with the money. Today was a unique day for me. Ta gave me money and showed me how to take the bus to downtown. I boarded the bus and reached Queen Street for the first time. The tall buildings left me awestruck, and I felt like I was living in a TV show. I started walking up the street, but the weather suddenly changed. A freezing wind blew, and it started raining, making it even colder. I couldn't help but gaze into the shop windows, admiring all the beautiful things they had to offer. In one particular shop, they were selling vacations, and I saw a big picture of my island. 
It looked stunning, with the blue lagoon, dark sea, and the waves breaking on the reef. I wanted to show people and say, hey, that's my island. Isn't it beautiful? But everyone was busy rushing past, not stopping or noticing. As I walked up Queen Street, I searched for a clothing store to buy a jacket. The wind was piercing through my clothes, and I felt like I wasn't wearing anything. I spotted a large shop and decided to enter it. Inside, there were many jackets, but a store employee was staring at me, making me feel uncomfortable. So, I left and continued walking in the cold. After a while, I came across another shop that sold jackets. I was very anxious about what I was going to do. But I was so cold that I didn't care how wrong it was. All I wanted was to get a jacket and be warm again, even if it meant taking a risk. I went into the shop and started looking at the jackets. I had a white supermarket bag in my pocket, so I took out the bag, grabbed a blue jacket, and quickly put it in the bag. My hands were shaking, and I wanted to run, but instead, I walked around slowly and pretended to look at other coats. Then, I walked out. I didn't stop until I got to the bridge over the motorway. I took out the jacket and saw the price tag $125. I put it on. It was so warm. It has wool inside and keeps out the rain. I wore it until I got close to home. Then I put it back in the bag and hid it under my bed. I had trouble sleeping last night. I feel guilty for taking the jacket from the shop. Stealing is wrong. And I have been taught this by the church my entire life. I can't shake off this feeling of shame. I have decided not to wear the jacket again. Even in the most difficult circumstances, Anne Frank did not steal anything, not even when she was starving. Today is Saturday. Ta got three videos, all about fighting and shooting. I can hear the noise through the wall, and it sounds like a war is happening. Back home on Saturday nights, we used to go to the big holiday hotel on the little island of Tokoa. We'd sit under the trees have fruit drinks, and watch the dancing for the tourists. It was beautiful there, and I loved the dancing and the music. When I'm older, I want to dance at Tokoa. I've decided what to do about the jacket. On Monday, I will take it back to the shop. Today was a significant day, and I want to make sure I don't forget anything. When I got up, I put my jacket in my school bag and informed my aunt that I was going to school. I walked to the town and waited until after 9 o'clock, then I went to the shop. There weren't many people inside. So I headed towards the section where the jackets were kept and began to take my jacket out of the bag. However, when I looked up, I noticed a lady with gray hair staring at me from across the dresses. She saw me and walked towards me. What are you doing? Did you take this? She said, sounding cross. I couldn't explain to her that I was returning it because I had taken it before. I thought she wouldn't believe me, so she took my arm and said, Come with me. We went to the back of the shop and I started crying. We entered an office where we saw a young man in a suit sitting at a desk. The lady informed him that she had caught me taking a jacket. The man then asked me if it was true. And I simply nodded as I couldn't stop crying. I feared that I would have to go to court, and my family would be ashamed of me. A man instructed me to take a seat and promptly made a phone call. It's a shoplifter, he said. He then asked me for my details including my name, address, and school. 
After a while, a young, attractive policewoman arrived while the shopkeeper left. The policewoman spoke kindly to me and asked me questions. It was easier to talk to her, and I told her everything about the jacket and what I had done. She said to the man, I think she's telling the truth, and I think we should talk to someone from the school first. The man looked upset, but he agreed. Very unusual. The police officer said, I've never heard of a shoplifter who returned what they stole. She smiled at me and asked me who I would like them to talk to from the school. When Mrs. Price arrived, she seemed normal and not worried. However, I started crying again because I was so ashamed. Mrs. Price sat beside me and said, Don't worry, 2N, everything will be all right. Mrs. Price and a police officer were having a friendly conversation, which appeared to make the shop manager angry. Mrs. Price, who despite having gray hair, was young and spoke kindly, asked me why I hadn't been going to school. I explained to her about the money my late uncle, and my worries about exams. I also told her about how I took the jacket because I was cold while going out. I apologized for what I did and expressed my remorse. After I finished narrating my story, Mrs. Price and the police officer turned their attention towards the store manager. The police officer declared, We have found the jacket. Mr. Jackson, and we do not believe that this girl is a thief. The manager nodded in agreement. I apologized for taking his jacket and promised not to do it again. He stood up and nodded, and Mrs. Price offered to take 2N home. Mrs. Price and I were sitting in her car outside my house. She spoke slowly and thoughtfully as if she was pondering something important. She suggested, we can provide you with additional lessons at school to assist you in catching up. Moreover, I'll inquire whether your aunt can obtain some financial aid from the government. I'm confident she'll be able to do so. This will aid in resolving the issue with your clothes after looking at me for a long time. Mrs. Price asked if I would like them to arrange for me to go home. I looked back into her kind eyes. The way she said it, I knew that going home was possible. Tears welled up in my eyes, and through them. I saw a house, some faces, and the lagoon, shining beautifully in blue. I would like to go home, I said.